Welcome back to Wirecast, guys. Hope you're doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be continuing to talk about the hush money criminal trial against Donald Trump that's going on in New York. This video is going to be an addendum to the video that I made yesterday where we talked about uh, David Pecker's testimony and how it basically sunk Trump because David Pecker has essentially agreed with every single thing the prosecutors have asked him, the narrative that the prosecutors are creating to convict Trump. Pecker has not objected to any of it. He has gone along with the uh, prosecutor's narrative because it's true. Okay, And today, uh, he continued to go in that direction. So I was under the impression that he was done testifying, but apparently not. He had a little bit more to go. Uh, uh, like I told you guys yesterday, the Trump side did uh, start their cross-examination at the end of the day today. But uh, Pecker was still testifying for uh, during the morning time and most of the day. Okay, So I want to cover it today and finish him off uh, as a witness. Because today's evidence that he gave, the testimony that he gave was probably even more incriminating against Trump than the rest of it, because he basically admitted that Trump was directly cons concerned about hiding these stories, uh, making it making it very clear to the jury that he would definitely write these checks to try to uh, pay off Stormy Daniels to make sure that it doesn't impact the election, which is what he's charged with, trying to uh, unfairly and untruthfully um, by filing false documents influence the election. That's the felony that he's been charged with. So uh, watch this video over here if you want more details about what happened in the first two days. This is regarding what happened on the third day where um, uh, David Pecker, who was a friendly figure to uh, Trump trying to help him win the 2016 election. Voluntarily, they were friends since the 1980s, so he's been trying to help. He was trying to help uh, Trump back then, and today he actually said that he's still in good terms with Trump. And Trump, notice, has not attacked David Pecker like he's attacked Michael Cohen and other people, even though David Pecker has been burying him for the last two days, or three days, excuse me. Okay, so it's weird. It's almost like he's afraid of David Pecker for some reason. That's how it seems, because he's not afraid of uh, uh, Stormy Daniels and uh, um, and Cohen, he's been attacking Cohen repeatedly, despite the fact that Cohen can also bury him, right? But there's some other mechanic going on with David Pecker, which is why he hasn't gone all out, you know, scorched earth against uh, David Pecker on his social media like he does against everybody else. Kind of weird, but I'm not going to speculate because I don't know what their relationship is today. So I'm not going to make up conspiracies like some other people do. So I just don't know. But I'm just telling you it's interesting. Uh, so let's get to today's testimony. Trump schemed to cover up Stormy Daniels, Karen McDougal, and Karen McDougal affair rumors, media mogul testify. So he basically gave away the game with this testimony because, the, see, as I explained in my last video, the importance of David Pecker is that he had direct contacts with Trump himself. OK, that th those kind of mens rea witnesses are important. Mens rea witnesses are people who can testify to the mental state of the accused. OK, the accused being Donald Trump uh, and uh, Pecker had direct contacts with him during this period in 2015, 2016. And uh, he knew his mindset because Trump was directly talking to him and saying what he wanted about these stories. And also uh, the other purpose of them putting up Pecker is to establish the credibility of uh, Michael Cohen as a key player in Trump's orbit, because the key witness in this case is Michael Cohen, who's going to be put up later. And whether you whether you like him or not, I don't. But he has key evidence against Trump in this case. And that's what matters. It doesn't matter what we think about these witnesses. Only the only thing matters that matters in a criminal case is what evidence do they have to present that's backed up by evidence to the jury. And will the jury believe it within the context of this case? It doesn't matter how bad these people are in the real world. What A criminal case and, and other legal cases are self-contained. OK, for the most part, obviously, you know, opinions might uh, play into it a little bit, but the jury is bound by law to consider the facts in this case alone. It doesn't matter how horrible you think Michael Cohen is in other cases or in other things in life. What evidence does he have in this case that's relevant to th these crimes that have been accused against Donald Trump? Okay, that's what's important. So the jury is bound by law to look only at the evidence presented in this case. You cannot look at other cases that are completely unrelated to this criminal case. So that's what prevents Trump's defense, which is that, oh, Michael Cohen's a liar. OK, what does that have to do uh, with anything here? Everything that he's saying in this case is true. Sure, he might be a liar in other things. And of course, he was convicted of lying for Trump, by the way, to protect him. Um, but nevertheless, that is that's a federal case that's irrelevant to this case. Okay, In this case, Michael Cohen was a key player 
talk to Pecker, talk to Trump directly, talk to McDougal and and also uh, Stormy Daniels, all the people involved. Michael Cohen is a key player here. So regardless of his past, Michael Cohen's testimony is going to bury Trump completely uh, when it comes to his testimony later in the case. Pecker's job was twofold. One, to tell the jury about Trump's mindset, which is what he's doing here, and two, to establish the credibility of Michael Cohen as a key player in this game, in this you know political campaign uh, during 2015, 2016, as somebody who was a key go between uh, Trump and other people like Pecker. So those that those are the twofold reasons why the prosecutors put up this witness, uh, Pecker, okay, David Pecker. So uh, we talked about uh, who he is before. He was CEO of America, American Media, and also, and they owned um, the National Enquirer as well as other properties. But nevertheless, that's what's important here. Uh, he offered to be the eyes and ears of Trump's first presidential campaign, and Trump was open to that. Under the deal, he bought exclusive rights to some of Trump's uh, more scandalous rumors in order to shield them from the public. Whether they were true or not, he was willing to bury the stories. So not a real good journalist, but nevertheless, what you what would you expect from these people? Um, when Pecker caught word that McDougal, a former Playboy model, was claiming to have had a years long affair with Trump, he said he immediately called Trump's then lawyer, Michael Cohen. First, he said the story wasn't true. Pecker said Thursday, but Pecker and Cohen both believed the rumor to be uh, a threat to Trump's campaign. By he, they mean Trump, because Trump denied it, of course, as his his reflex. Even if it's true, he's going to deny it. I felt that this story should be purchased, Pecker testified. I believe this story was true. So despite despite, uh, Trump's denials, Pecker actually believed that the story was true. Pecker said uh, he eventually talked to Trump, who described McDougal as a nice girl, and asked him if other publications were looking to buy her story. Quote, you should buy the story and take it off the market. Trump eventually told him Pecker testified. Pecker agreed, but having recently paid $30,000 for the rights to another damning Trump rumor, Uh, having to do with that doorman and him allegedly getting somebody pregnant. Uh, He said he was hesitant for his company to front another $150,000 to buy McDougal's. Uh, Pecker said Cohen was insistent that American media be the side to pay, however. Why should I pay? Pecker uh, recalled asking Cohen. I just paid $30,000 for the doorman story. Now you're asking me to pay pay $150,000 for the Karen story? Cohen repeatedly assured Pecker that he would be taken care of and told him not to worry about reimbursement because the boss, quote unquote, would take care of it. Pecker testified Thursday. Pecker grew, uh, Pecker drew up a contract for McDougal that stipulated American media would pay her 150 k for an array of services, including a batch of ghostwritten stories to appear in his magazines. He admitted Thursday that those services were added to, quote, disguise the true nature of the contract to purchase McDougal's love affair story about Trump. So this is key because just just before we get to the checks, which is where we're heading, there are, these are other um, pattern acts that show the pattern that Trump himself told uh, Cohen directly, not Cohen, excuse me, Pecker directly in this case, uh, that he should be buying this story and burying it. Okay, where was it? Um, uh, Trump himself, you should buy the story and take it off the market. So this is essentially what he paid uh, uh, Michael Cohen to do. Okay, Michael Cohen paid off Stormy Daniels and then Trump paid off my, uh, Michael Cohen. Okay, and Michael Cohen is claiming that he did it at the behest of Trump, and that's the controversy. Did Trump actually told him to, tell him to do it? Of course he did. Why would Michael Cohen magically do it by himself if it wasn't for Trump? <laughs> Michael Cohen was a direct go between Trump and other people. Okay, he, Michael Cohen has no other reasons to do it other than to help out Trump. So of course he did it at the direction of Trump, and that's clear. But nevertheless, the you know it has to be more in in a criminal case. It has to be more than just an assumption. The jury has to see some evidence to support it. And when Michael Cohen testifies, they will have that evidence. Okay, so in here, this is uh, hurtful for him because this is hurtful for Trump because there's a direct quote from Pecker saying that Trump told him to take the story off the market. 
giving direct credibility to the accusations that have been leveled against Trump by the prosecutors regarding the checks, that he was the one who wanted Stormy Daniels paid off. That goes directly to the business, uh, the records violations that are uh, accused against him, charged against him in this case. Okay, So this is why it's damning. This is one of the most important lines from his testimony because this provides direct mens rea evidence, mental intent evidence about what Trump was thinking when it comes to these kind of you know payoffs and ways to get rid of hurtful stories. He wanted them off the market. And he had th this guy pay for it. And he wasn't stupid enough to pay two times. So he goes on to say that he actually did. After being skeptical, he did go on to purchase the story. So uh, Becker is an idiot. But nevertheless, you know, what can you expect? Um, so, so yeah, eventually they went on to buy the story. Uh, the right to any romantic personal relationship with McDougal has ever had with a, any then married man were to be transferred to American media. One paragraph of the contract said, so this is basically some specifics from the contract uh, for the $150,000 when they purchased her story uh, or potential future stories as it cites here having to do with the married men. OK, that basically tried to, to cover Trump. It was buried between details of McDougal's purported work obligations. Pecker said he paid McDougal, but Trump never reimbursed him. Of course, does he ever pay anybody? Cohen eventually tried to keep the deal in place, but Pecker said he did so by uh, uh, starting a shell company to discreetly wire the cash. And Pecker, fearful of violating campaign finance laws, pulled out of the agreement at the last uh, minute, much to Cohen's disdain. The boss is going to be very angry with you, Cohen said, according to Pecker. I can't believe it. I'm a lawyer. I'm your friend. Prosecutors claim the incident was part of a broader effort from Trump to meddle with the 2016 election by killing negative press about his campaign. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who indicted Trump last year, is accusing the former president of falsifying business records to cover up the supposed hush money scheme. OK, so, um, yeah, this is direct evidence that goes to uh, what's going to be Michael Cohen's testimony. So all of this is going to be once again reinforced when Michael Cohen is on the stand. Like I said yesterday, uh, building a criminal case is like building a house. You do it with a solid foundation, then you slow, slowly build the rest of the house. Uh, i.e. the rest of the criminal case okay so you lay the foundation with this guy who's not who's not the most direct person cohen was the direct go-between but he, this guy also directly talked to trump so he has uh criminal intent evidence he talked to trump directly trump is the accused okay so with the best kind of evidence that you can have in a case like this is people who directly talk to the defendant in question and pecker is one of the one of these people that's why he's important um, prosecutors say this became necessary for Trump because Pecker, after not being reimbursed for the uh, past cover-ups, uh, refused to keep buying stories. When it came to light that Stormy Daniels, an ex-porn star, was planning to share a story about her own affair with Trump, Pecker said Trump's team pressured him to buy the rights, but Pecker said he held firm. So he did buy the last two stories, the uh, the uh, Dino one, the Doorman one, for 50000 and um, uh, the uh, McDougal one, no, excuse me, for 30,000, not 50,000, and the 150,000 for the McDougal one. So he did buy those, okay, those two. But then when they asked him to buy the other one, uh, he refused regarding uh, Stormy Daniels. Uh, but Pecker said he held firm that he will not buy it this time. We already paid 30,000 to the doorman. We paid 150,000 to McDougal. Pecker recalled thinking, I am not purchasing this story. Rumors about Daniels started swirling at a particular uh, inopportune time for the Trump campaign. It was the autumn of 2016 with the presidential election mere weeks away, and Trump already was dealing with the fallout from the infamous Access Hollywood tape uh, resurfacing in which he can be heard boasting about crude uh, comments. You know, we all know what he said. Uh, it was very embarrassing, very damaging to the campaign, Pecker admitted, and anybody, everybody was uh, very concerned about what impact it could have had. Since Pecker refused to foot the bill, Cohen had to pay Daniels out of his own pocket. Becker testified Trump's eventual reimbursement of Cohen would lead to the charges in the case. So this is what leads to the, the uh, charges. Okay, Even though there are other schemes, the main scheme that they have charged him for is reimbursing Cohen under false pretenses, pretending to pay legal fees, when the real reason was to uh, pay Cohen off for directly paying off uh, Stormy Daniels. So the reason that Cohen had to pay out of his own pocket was the other guy who was hiding stories before Pecker refused to hide this story. And they thought the Stormy Daniels one would be harmful to them in the campaign, like 
you know, like I said, with the evangelicals, but also in general with the suburban voters and other people who don't uh, take too kindly to people who are sleeping with porn stars. Okay. And you can say that's wrong or not, whatever. That's those are the values people have. And they don't, they think it's sleazy and they're not going to vote for a guy like that. At least we thought, but apparently uh, most of Trump's uh, audience doesn't really care or most of his uh, fans and his voters don't really care, have any morals at all, it seems. They'll abandon Jesus and God for this German uh, traitor. So that's the kind of people that follow him. But nevertheless, that's a different story and uh, a very disappointing side of some minority of Americans. It's a small minority, but nevertheless, they're very vocal and they vote a lot. So that's why they're dangerous um, for the, you know, for the democracy. But nevertheless, regardless of whatever his fans think, they thought that he was going to hurt the campaign in 2016. He wasn't president yet, remember. It was a much different time back then in 2016. And so that's why they were, that's why Cohen directly paid off Stormy Daniels. So we're getting closer and closer to the charge indictment here and the case, the charges in this case. Pecker claims he wasn't involved in the Daniels transaction, but the McDougal deal eventually would come back to bite Pecker anyways. In 2019, he made a deal with Manhattan prosecutors to tell them about his meetings with Trump and Cohen. It would be the beginning of the end of his speaking relationship with Trump. But Pecker said he still harbors no ill will towards the former president. So he He's not a, a Trump hater. And like I said, Trump hasn't attacked him for some for whatever magical reason. He's attacked everybody else, but not Cohen, uh, not uh, Pecker. OK, he's attacked Cohen a lot. On the contrary, he said, I felt that Donald Trump was my mentor. He helped me throughout my career, which is probably true. I still consider him a friend. So that's his perspective. Whatever you think about it, that's what Pecker thinks. So he's not some anti-Trump guy. He still likes Trump, but he just he's just telling the truth about what happened during this case because he's been subpoenaed. So he has to tell the truth. Otherwise, he risks he risks getting prosecuted for lying and possibly obstruction of justice. OK. Thursday was Pecker's third day on the witness stand. So far, his recounting of events nearly identical is nearly identical to the prosecutors. Like I said, like I told you guys, he hasn't contradicted the prosecutors one time. OK, maybe he worded things differently uh, on the stand, but there's been no reporting that he disagreed with the prosecutors. So he's completely buried Trump as far as it goes with his testimony. The only thing that's left over is for Cohen to come and just put the nails on the coffin for Donald Trump in this case. It's all over. Uh, Thursday was Pecker's third day. Uh, yeah, okay, we got that. In the afternoon, Trump's attorney, uh, Emil Bove, uh, Bovey, whatever, started his cross-examination. Like I told you yesterday, the cross-examination would start today. It'll probably finish um, next week. So they'll go for a couple of days as well. Um, in which he uh, insinuated that Trump's relationship with Pecker was uh, was uh, par for the course among celebrities. That's ex literally what I told you what he, they would say, that this is a normal relationship that other people have also had. And uh, that's exactly what they're going for. Pecker told the court he had a similar relationship with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is probably true. That doesn't diminish anything with Trump, by the way, who had Pecker buy stories about him while he was running for governor of California. Well, the California authorities might have moved to uh, uh, um, prosecute Arnold Schwarzenegger if he was breaking California law. California law and New York law are not the same thing. And I don't know if we have the same laws uh, regarding this stuff in California that they have in New York, because there are differences in the uh, state law, in California state law and uh, uh, New York state law. Schwarzenegger never paid him back for those stories either, Pecker said, despite them costing his company hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, Pecker will return to the witness stand on Friday to continue his cross-examination and probably next week. Trump's uh, pleaded not guilty, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So like I told you told you yesterday in my video, I told you, I always tell you things before they happen. They're going to try to say that this is nothing weird, that nothing that Trump or Trump did uh, or even Cohen did was necessarily out of the norm because people buy stories all the time. That that may be true. That doesn't make it not illegal. That doesn't make it not a crime. If you violated a state, uh, state law in New York by trying to influence a campaign illegally, and the problem here is that he falsified the payments. Okay, he said they're something. He said they are for something that they were not. They tried to hide the payments. That's the crime. That's the main crime when it comes to the falsification of business documents. That's which is what he's been charged with. So it's not necessarily that the media is sleazy or some people in the media are sleazy and they you know kill stories even if they're true and that people want to help out their campaigns. That's normal stuff. Lying on finance documents and trying to get your lawyer to pay off a porn star. The lying part is a crime. OK, that's what he's being prosecuted for, not being a sleazy douchebag or not, you know, somebody who's trying to help out his campaign. That's normal stuff in politics. But going as far as falsifying documents, that's a crime.
Okay, so Trump always tries to, you know, brush aside his wrongdoing and pretend that this is what other people have done, but they've never gotten prosecuted. Many people have been prosecuted for uh, fa falsifying business documents. Many people in uh, many white collar criminals have been uh, prosecuted, despite what the left says. Uh, rich people are prosecuted all the time by the prosecutors in America. They prosecute everybody, no matter what their economic standing is, because we have a fair legal system here, despite the lies of the anti-law and order people here. Uh, or we have a great justice system. System, and Trump is seeing the results of our great justice system right now, the proceedings of our great justice system right now, when he has to sit his ass down like everybody else or every other criminal and go through this trial. So everybody from the right wing to the left wing has been proven wrong about our justice system. It's working exactly how it should. And hopefully the jury comes to the right conclusion based on the evidence. Okay, But whatever the jury comes out with, I agree with them, even if they find Trump innocent, which I seriously doubt that they will. But I accept the results of the legal system, even if I disagree with them. But I think the jury will find him guilty. I, like I told you, it's 95 percent chance that it's going to be, you know, conviction guilty and 5 percent chance of not guilty. OK, Be, the only time that that can happen is if the, the jury believes that what he did was just political and it wasn't a crime, which they can't possibly think that because he falsified business records. But we'll get to that with uh, Michael Cohen's testimony. Then the jury can see uh, why it is a crime. OK, but the only circumstance where he gets off is if the jury thinks that this is not a crime, that this is just politics. That's the only way that he'll escape. But I don't think the jury will say that. OK, but that's that's the scen only scenario where he goes free. But it's unlikely because he violated the letter of the law. And as as long as we have enough witnesses, uh, 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 well-spoken witnesses, uh, to uh, to establish his crime, then he's going down. Okay. But we'll see what happens at the end of the uh, end of this case. That's all I got to say for this video. And uh, if you guys like my content, as always, make sure to like the video, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, press all. If you want to support my show, you can do so on Patreon over here and also join channel memberships down there. And you can watch my last video over here. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video as always.